Live from the Perilous Parlor, it's the Insane Board Game Freak Show with your host, Media Insane Board Game Freak. Come on, Scory Barty. A game about a movie starring Jim Carrey and I forget his name, Liam, somebody, so and so, and Doogie Hauser. Look for the movie Christmas 2004. That's uh, way past. Save the Guardian from Count Olaf. Dear gaming enthusiast, you are about to experience the unfortunate lives of Violet, Klaus, and Sonny Bladelaire first hand as you attempt to escape the evil clutches of Count Olaf. Play your favorite characters, but beware Count Olaf's tragedy cards. Cooperate to keep the Guardian alive until Mr. Poe returns from the bank to win. In this episode... <laughs> Lemony Snickets. A series of unfortunate events. The Perilous Polar Game. The board game. For real this time, because in the last episode I messed it up and stuff like that. Quick, anyway, quick to the board game room. <laughs> but he still has his gas. All right, here we go. It's uh, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Perilous Polar Game. The board game. So now in this game, you know, this board here, and it's of the house, the mansion, whatever. And um, you're going to set the game up like this. You know, the Guardians, you're going to have one of the Guardians is going to be over here at the end of the uh, the cemetery there, the tombstone path, whatever. You're going to have another one in the billiards room. I guess she wants to play, you know, shoot some pool. Um, you're going to get the, the kids and the cat, whatever, the pet. Is gonna the uh, the baby? All the kids are gonna be in the bedroom there, starting off the bedroom, and then uh, Poe and uh, Lemony Snicket, whatever, whatever the heck his name is, what's his name? Count Olaf is gonna be um, yeah at the front door there at the door. You got these dice here, okay? Uh, each dice you're gonna move um, the character, so there's gonna be a die for each character like that and this is going to be count Olaf's die here okay so you know they're going to match the color player markers that they are okay and um you're going to have these tokens here you have item tokens and you're going to put them on top of each item box that you see on the game board disguise tokens and you're going to see yeah you know, they're going to be all the game board to put them on there and secret tokens okay which uh Oh, Hickory Dickory Dock. The staircase is behind the clock. Oh, okay. It's going to be um, on these blue spaces here. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much basically it. So you're going to have um, like a book as an item, uh, a gear, a tooth, or a fireball. Whatever the heck that is. I don't know. A fireball. Is this Fireball Mansion? <laughs> uh,. Here's the gear, and that's it. And then for the disguises, you're going to have, like, all of um, Count Olaf's, you know, wearing disguises and stuff. You know, he's going to be disguised as an army man, a pilot, a, a, a pirate, rather. Uh, I don't know, a guy having a bared hair day, and he needs to shave because his barber probably went on strike. And then he's going to have... Uh, uh, this version of him with the turban on his head. And, um, you yeah, know, he's got another version of him. And he's going to be bald with a long beard. So, you know, and he's going to be in the hallway blocking you from getting by. In the hallway, he'll probably break some wind. We're not going to go into that again. Because I made a really... <laughs> really stupid, silly video about this game uh, before this episode. Um, 
if I deleted it, then I deleted it, but I don't know. So anyway, that's it. So um, I just got off from work. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I just felt like acting up. So, but I'm not acting. So anyway, um, uh, the room cards. These are gonna be. You're gonna have, um, guardian cards. Okay, your guardian cards are gonna be the rooms. So lonely library, ghastly uh, garage. I know. Yeah. That's what he farted. The menacing uh, menagerie. Yeah, creepy kitchen, so on and so forth. So these cards, the guardian cards, are going to be all the, all the rooms. The clever cards. Clever cards. I'll go over them. <clears throat> um, clever cards. So... Using the cards, when you want to use the cards, whenever a player moves, uh, mover lands on a, on one of the, the card spaces, okay, they'll, they'll land on a card space. Uh, somewhere here, you know, I guess the, the eye or something like that, or different card spaces. Um, okay, so whatever, um. So they'll land on a card space, and they, they get to draw one card. The, ch the children draw from the clever deck, and Count Olaf always draws from the tragedy deck. So somebody's going to be playing as Count Olaf, and Count Olaf, it just, um, it tells you like a little story to read. So now it uh, takes two lumps and loses three life points. So... You're going to thwart uh, three books. If you have them and stuff, sometimes you have to thwart two gears and a tooth. Okay? So, a, a, an event will take place. And then, um, you'll have to do what the event says, you know, and uh, act it out, whatever. And, um, you know, play the card. And, you know, like, um, do what the cards say. So, now, um... So Kanolov can hold six tragedy cards in his hand at one time. Um, the Baudelaire children can collectively hold six clever cards uh, in their hand. And it doesn't matter if there's one more player, uh, if, if there's one player controlling the children or three players. Between them all, they, they may have some more than six cards. If players have six cards but are not happy with the cards in their hand, when they land on a card space, they may draw a new card and discard back down to six. Um, each character may play one card at any time during their turn. Whenever a card is played, place a face up on the discard pile. Okay. And then, um, you know, beside the matching deck. And then whenever you finish a deck, just shuffle them up again. And then uh, this, you know, in, in discard pile and start a new draw pile. So you gotta reshuffle it. You gotta shuffle. You gotta reshuffle the cards and then make a new draw pile, basically, pretty much, and that's it. So the, the tragedy cards, Count Olaf, um, travels around the board, collecting tragedy cards. So he's gonna you're gonna move, be moving him around collecting the tragedy cards, and they'll tell him what to do. So each tragedy card is three points of damage to the guardian. Okay, so. All right, so um, each tragedy card, okay, uh, Count Olaf can play a tragedy card against the Guardian wherever he's in the same room, whenever he's in the same room as the Guardian. He does not need to be in the same room as the action described on the card. Okay, so um, the, the bottom of each tragedy card displays three thwart symbols, okay? These symbols... Um, will be red gears, blue books, or orange teeth. The children need these items to cancel the effect of that card. So that's why they have them listed below down there. So you're going to have to have like an item. So the kids are going to be collecting uh, tokens to use as weapons against, you know, items against um, Count Olaf, okay, to de be able to defeat him whenever he tries to play a card on, on you or something like that. So now the bottom of each card displays a symbols, and these symbols will be used to try to um, um, cancel the card's effect of 
the tragedy cards or count all of the cards they put on against you. So use against you. So the Battle Air Trojan uh, do not need to be in the, the same room as Count Olaf or the Guardian to thwart a, a tragedy card. So um, while thwart symbols, sometimes a question mark will appear in the place of a thwart symbol. And these are wild thwart swim symbols. And then any type of item, gear, book, or tooth can be used in place of this symbol. So um, you'll see one with a question mark somewhere in here as I try to find it but instead just waste time looking for it you'll 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 end up finding it and seeing it okay so that's that with the tragedy cards now clever cards okay clever cards the bounty of children may collect up to six clever cards between them they share these cards so each player is going to get some cards and going to share and figure out what to do with them. So you can activate any of the items that you have. I mean, as a question mark, I'm assuming it's a wild, but let's see. Find out. Clever cards are used to heal the Guardian, um, move Mr. Poe extra spaces, or free captured children. Okay, and I'll tell you that when I talk to you about uh, talk to you about the frozen department, the frozen food department. Okay, the the the, the frozen uh, part of the game when you're frozen. However, they can only be played if the children have collected the correct item tiles required to activate them. Okay. So, um, to use a clever card, simply spend the item tiles listed at the bottom of the card. Okay. And, um, then follow directions on the card. After spreading the item tiles, if they're spending the item tiles, you must return them to the to the board. So you're gonna return the item tiles where you found them, or you can mix them up, whatever, to make the game more challenging. Uh, I don't know, but anyway, so, the, so now each character, uh, you know, the kids can play one clever card in their turn. You know, Violet, Klaus, or Sunny can play one cl uh, clever card in their turn, and then movers do not need to be in the same room as the mover that they are affecting the card. Uh, play for the clever card. Okay, so guardian cards. The guardian cards have rooms on them. They flip them over whenever Mr. Poe ends the ends his movement on an image of Count Olaf's eye tattoo. Okay, so the player controlling Count Olaf turns over the guardian card at the end of Olaf's turn, and then moves the guardian marker located in the house to whatever the room the card identifies. So, for instance, uh, the card is um, the bleak bedroom. So, you're going to put the guardian in the bleak bedroom now. And that's that. So, now um, and that ends that turn. Now, um, so that's the guardian cards. And then the player controlling the candle off turns over the guardian card to control where they go. Whatever, something like that. So now note that it doesn't matter which space in the in the room the guardian uh, occupies. Okay, just put them in the room. That's it. Um, now you get these tiles here. Now using these tiles, um, the the kids are, uh, collect them, and um, they they they're marked with, uh, with red gears, blue books, and orange teeth, and pull them all together. So now they share these tiles between them. Okay, whenever you use them. So you're all working together. It's kind of a cooperative game. Um, so Count Olaf cannot pick up the item tiles. Okay. Um, Count Olaf can't pick up the item tiles. And the children hold the combination of the item tiles listed on Olaf's tragedy card. Okay. Then, or on one of their clever cards, they can spend the item and use it to cancel Olaf's card. And prevent the guardian from taking any damage or to activate their clever card. Okay? So that's as simple as that, what I just said. So now um if the if if the uh if the children should keep their, their item tiles hidden from Count Olaf so that Olaf won't know which of the tragedy cards the children are able to thwart and defeat, okay? Which is pretty cool. Um, now, after spending item tiles to thwart a tragedy card or activate a clever card, 
The player or players controlling the children place the item tiles face down on any empty space item spaces on the board. Okay. And then um an item tile may be placed on a space already occupied by a mover. However, that mover does not automatically get to collect it. Okay. Um, after spreading, if the spending item tiles to, to thwart a tragedy card or activate a clever card, the player or players controlling the children place the item tiles face down in any empty spaces. Okay. So now, um, an item tile may be placed on a space already occupied by a mover. However, that mover does not automatically get to collect it. So now, the children may hold as many item tiles as they want. Okay. Um, disguise tiles. So those are the item tiles I just explained. Now, these disguise tiles. Okay. Um, tw the, the, the 12 disguise tiles contain six pairs of matching illustrations that show Count Olaf in various disguises. Whenever one of the kids uh, lands on a disguise tile, the player or players may look at, at this uh, tile and then replace it face down. Okay? So now, if, the, if they choose to do so, the player who lands on a disguise tile may attempt to go and guess where the matching disguise is and flip it over as well. So the other players can help guess. So you're going to guess to see which other tile is a matching tile just like this one somewhere on the board and you're gonna all help each other guess where it is okay so now um if they choose to do so that's what's gonna happen okay and then you get um you gotta find it all right so if, if, if they guess it incorrect the, the correct uh the character who landed on the disguise tile space loses their next turn and the tiles are replaced face down the board. But if they guess it right, then the other players, um, then then it, it, uh, the guardian regains one life point, and the two matching tiles are removed from the board. So if you guess it right, then you, you're gonna remove those two disguise tiles from the board, and then the uh, the guardians get an extra life point. Yeah, you know, if they if have they gotten life damage or not from um, Olaf. Count Olaf, okay? So now, a player may only guess where matching disguise tiles are when they are, when when their mover is sitting on a disguise tile, or standing on a disguise tile. The tile they are on must be the first tile that they flip over, okay? So now, here's about Frozen. Whenever a Count Olaf ends his uh, movement on a space adjacent, not diagonal, to one of the, uh, about, uh, to one of the kids, he may lock that child in the children's bedroom. Okay. Uh, Count Olaf cannot capture a child on the other side of, of a wall. Okay. Only if he lands on him or something. Though they land on him. Okay. So now the captured child is placed on their bed in the children's bedroom and remains frozen there. Okay. And then a frozen child may not move or play any cards until one of the other children unfreezes them. Either by playing a clever card, okay, that has that ability to do so, or you're going to, um, or by entering the room and staying there, okay? Uh, even if the new child enters, becomes it, has been captured, uh, the, the, the first captured child is released, okay? And the other one, that's, I don't know, whatever. Uh, remember, Olaf can only keep one child captured at a time. So the turn order always remains the same. A freed child must still wait for their turn in the sequence before they can take any action. Okay? Now, the Guardian's life points. The Guardian's life points, um, the Guardian marker on the life path keeps track of the current um, life points. So the marker moves closer to the tombstone when Olaf damages the Guardian and away from the Tombstone when the children heal the Guardian. The Guardian is eliminated when the Guardian marker on the life path reaches the Tombstone space. So every time it takes damage, it go moves closer to the Tombstone. But every time it gets a life point back, it's going to move back up to here. And then um, this Guardian and this in the, on the game main part of the game board... Is going to be able to uh, still, you know, go around in the game. Okay. So now, um, 
Uh, so now let's uh, say about um, disguise tiles. Okay, we talked about that. I spoke to you about that already. Okay, the Guardian's life points. So that's basically it. So now, um, setting up, you're just going to set the game up like that, like how I showed you in the beginning. Overview about the game. Um, how to play. So play always proceeds in the same order. Violet goes first with the red die. Okay, then um, Klaus goes second with the blue die. And uh, Sunny moves third with the orange die. And then Count Olaf moves fourth. With the green die. So that's the order of gameplay no matter what. Okay. So now after Count Olaf finishes his turn. The player controlling Olaf moves Mr. Poe. One space along uh, his sidewalk path. Okay. To go into here. Alright. I guess that's the mausoleum. Anyway. So um, the uh, general movement now. A player rolls a die. And can move up to the number of spaces that they rolled. However, they must always move at least one space. So you can you can roll, and you can you can move them six, or you can move them under six spaces, any any amount of number of spaces. Um, this guy you can move like five times, whatever, or under five times. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay. So now movers cannot travel diagonally. Okay. Um, movers cannot share the same space except with the guardian marker. Okay. So you can land on the same space as the guardian, and that's that. That's cool. That's okay. But then that's it. So now uh, movers can move through spaces occupied by other movers. So you can move one, two, three, four. Okay. Now um, movers can move through spaces occupied by other movers. Uh, movers can only enter and exit rooms through doorways. They cannot pass. Uh through any way other rooms except for through a door so they can pass through any door whether it's open or closed uh the kids and count olaf cannot move out of the house a, a, a mover must stop on a card space item space or disguise space if the player wishes to draw a card or item or to look at the disguise a mover cannot end its movement on its on the space from which it started from okay so you can't do that back and forth thing uh-uh so now, uh, moving through secret passages. If a mover lands on a secret passage tile, okay, then um, it may instantly travel to a matching secret passage tile, whether in, in the house to, you know, anywhere in the house to finish its move. So you can probably end up there, 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 whatever. So uh, for for faster, quicker travel. Now, example of um, violent is one space from a secret passage tile. Okay, and she moves one space, blah, 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 blah. You can probably just read that and jumps to any magic tile. It, it doesn't count as a move and still has one space left to move. So she'll go like that and one, you know. So now um, if a mover lands on a secret passage tile on its last move, it may jump up the matching secret passage tile and remain there. Okay, so moving Mr. Poe. The player controlling Count Olaf always moves Mr. Poe at the end of Olaf's turn. So Mr. Poe always moves at least one space each turn unless the card has been played that affects his movements. Okay, um, now Mr. Poe travels from the brick space in, in front of the house to the stairs in front of the bank. Oh, at the bank, the mausoleum, jeez. Well, I thought, you know, if he goes down the other way, he's supposed to die in the game if he gets hurt by Olaf. Ah, whatever. So he's going to the bank. Okay, so now Mr. Poe travels like that to the bank and ends his journey uh, back on the brick space in front of the house. So, um, moving the Guardian. Now, whenever Mr. Poe ends his movement on a space marked with Ol Count Olaf's e uh, uh, eye tattoo, okay, then the player controlling Count Olaf draws a new Guardian card, then moves the Guardian marker located in the house in whichever room th the card identifies. Uh, it doesn't matter which uh, space the, the, the Guardian marker uh, occupies in a room because any other mover can share a space with the Guardian marker. And that's pretty much basically it. And how to win the game. Um, um, the game ends in one of two ways. If Mr. Poe reaches the brick space in front of the house before Count Olaf eliminates the Guardian, okay... Uh, the game ends and the kids 
uh, win. Uh, if Count Olaf eliminates the Guardian before Mr. Poe reaches the brick space in front of the house, then the game ends and Olaf wins. And that's pretty much basically it. And that's um, Lem uh, Lemony Snicket's a, a series of unfortunate events, the perilous polar the parlor game. The board game. Now let's, let's go see my final thoughts about the game. And why is there a box cutter there? All right, so final thoughts. Now, what do I like about this game? Wow, 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 wow. I like this game. This game ain't that bad. It's pretty cool. You're just going around the board trying to find items and stuff to defeat, um, you know, Olaf. Um, I, I, I think that that's pretty cool how you can defeat Olaf with the cards and how to thwart his cards. Um, I like how each individual die uh, is used for each individual character in the game. Um, I like how, you know, um, the guardians move, you know, get closer at a meter. or something like that. It's, it's almost like um, the, the vampire hunter game I have. Or something like that. Uh, I like how, um, you know, each item you can use. You gotta use those items against Olaf. I like the clever cards. You know, trying to see what you got. And you can play those cards and how they're played. So I like the Guardian cards. They're, they're cool. You can move around the Guardian to move, you know, and it, it, the, the, the game's pretty cool. I found it at a thrift shop for a couple of bucks. So, you know, I said, yeah, this, this the game's based on that movie with Jim Carrey, you know, playing as Olaf, whatever. So I'm, I'm like, it's pretty cool. I guess I'll check it out. I like the game. You know, it, it, it's got some action in it. It's pretty cool. I like it. I think it's kind of fun. Um, that's pretty much basically it. That's, uh... Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Peril, the Perilous Parlor Game. I'll try saying that three times fast. The Board Game. That's it for today. By the way, the game is over. Board Game Freak out.